Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what I'm going to try and do today is frame southern and east Africa as a regional development. What's going on at the moment? What are the potentials for the future? And at the end, we've put together a little bit of uh, forecasts for capex spends, etc., etc. So, obviously, this is what we've got here. We'll go through all the different regions, what's going on, and then we'll, we'll move on to the more exciting stuff. Um, for you who don't know about Infield, we are an oil and gas consultancy. We have oil and gas infrastructure databases, uh, specialist vessel databases, rigs databases. On the back of these, we can do uh, regional forecasts for asset demand, rig demand, uh, infrastructure going in, subsea uh, infrastructure. Um, we can also do due diligence on particular uh, for vessel uh, purchase, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Please check our website and you can see the full scope of our services. Uh, so these are some of the people we work with. We've got the main subsea suppliers, a lot of the main uh, subsea contractors. We've also got major operators there as well. So we, we're a, a several pronged company in what we can offer. So I've, I did a quick uh, nick of website logos. So these are all the companies that are basically working that we've managed to find in this, the southern and eastern African region. So you've got all, a lot of the majors are there, There's some of the big independents, some of the smaller companies who are going to talk after this as well, who've got some interesting leads. So offshore Namibia. Namibia at the moment has no oil and gas to speak of at, in production. The, the only major discovery there was was the Kudu field um, but this has been sort of debated over over the last couple of years how it's going to be developed. Uh, originally, it was going to be uh, 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 gas to gas to wire. There was also being compressed natural gas discussed about this. So this is still on hiatus at the moment, um, waiting for basically a, a, a development plan. But Gazprom and Namcor have, have, have made a special company to to um, advance the development of this particular region. or death. Offshore South Africa, here we go. Uh, South Africa um, originally started uh, back in the, the 90s with the, the Mossel Bay area. Um, this is the, the Obari oil field in 1990 and the FA fields uh, were Petro SA in 1992. Uh, the FA fields were tied back to a gas to liquids plant on, sh uh, on shore which was at the time, I think it was the, the largest GTL facility. And the, the Sable gas field came on, on, uh, on stream in 2003. Madagascar, this is not one that is on a lot of people's radars at the moment, but there is oil and gas re uh, reserves there. The, there's com these tend to be of a heavy nature. Uh, the, uh, what, sorry. <coughs> The uh, the Tism excuse me for my pronunciation Tismorial field uh, onshore has uh, onshore deposits. Offshore companies like Exxon Mobil, Nico Resources, and Sterling have some acreage. Uh, the trouble with Madagascar at the moment uh, in March 19, uh, 2009, the government was changed by shall we say non democratic means. Um, so everything is in hiatus there. Uh, there is new elections uh, timetables from uh, May 2000, uh, May this year. So basically, we just have to wait and see what's happening in this particular region. Uh, the next one is Jean de Nova. This is in the Mozambique Channel. This is administered by France. So all the, all the blocks are from the central French government. Uh, there is some exploration going on there at the moment. Um, the water depths are, you know, ranging from quite shallow to relatively deep. Uh, Stat Petro have just acquired some 2D seismic in this particular area, which was finished in March, uh, May of last year. Further up the coast, uh, you have the Comoro Islands. The, 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 the western extent of their uh, continental shelf has, is an extension of the Ravuma Fan, uh, the, excuse me, the Ravuma Delta, 
which is where all the Mozambique discoveries have been discovered so far. Uh, there, yes, there's a, there's, I have some more information on the geological systems there. So, but yes, you're going to get this presentation as well, so there's no need to scribble like mad. Mozambique. Uh, as it was mentioned earlier on, uh, up to 2005, that it, there was n hardly any exploration in this area, and it's all basically kicked off in the last couple of years. Um, we've got uh, they've got an, an, a licensing round in 2000 uh, for 14 blocks, and Sassel was the first to hit gas in block 1619, which is still being evaluated. Now the big the big discovery was obviously uh, Anadarko's wind jammer back in 2010. So this is in the region of 6.5 trillion cubic feet. Uh, and along with other discoveries in the areas, like Gosta is 4, 4 tr trillion cubic feet. Uh, Tubario is 3 cubic, uh, trillion cubic feet, um, et cetera, et cetera. So these have been grouped together to make the Cospidarte development. Um, on, the, on the back of this, ENI, uh, very shortly after Windjammer, came along with some uh, develop uh, discoveries of Mamba South, which is another massive discovery of uh, 8 TCF. Um, so this is the main uh, focus of all the, the earlier discussions on LNG, etc, etc. Um, in Tanzania, the, there has been some historical fields. The Manazi Bay concession uh, was originally drilled by E&I in 1981. Uh, this has uh, been uh, changed hands a couple of times. Uh, but BG have uh, recently discovered the Mazia gas and block, uh, gas discovery in Block 1, which is something in the region of 4 to 9 TCF. So it's still got to be fully discovered, uh, evaluated, excuse me. Moving further up the coast in Kenya, uh, there has been some onshore uh, discoveries in, in Kenya uh, with the Mbawa, and Tullo recently discovered an onshore discovery with uh, Tawiga South. The Anadarko uh, are, are planning to do some uh, offshore exploration there this year, um, and Apache has made a large discovery with a, a, a Mbawa wildcat off Kenya, but it, it did uh, fail to find oil and it's as a secondary target. But it's still the, the first offshore discovery of offshore Kenya. Um, but a political point is uh, Cove Energy, which also had uh, interests further on the coast, I think it was in uh, uh, Mozambique, how, I've tried to transfer some of their stakes to uh, PT, uh, PTT, the Thai concern, but that had been blocked by the government, which seems to want a, a bigger cut of the, the, the profits of that particular one. And a little one, uh, the Seychelles. Um, this is a very underexplored uh, region. Uh, Afrin, via its uh, East African exploration, uh, and WHL Energy, I've got some exploration in this area. They're going to be undertaking, I think it's a, a 2D seismic um, this year, with interpretation of that this year. Now, to the opportunities. Um, Kudu, obviously in Namibia, is a, is a, a, a big opportunity there. Um, BP is recently farmed into some acreage in Namibia. Um, at the tail end of last year, Petrobras and Chariot Oil, uh, Chariot Oil and Gas, did have uh, did do some exploration, uh, but they didn't find commercial hydrocarbons. But they are are, are going forward with some, uh, hopefully, for, for some drilling this year. There's been, mo I think, uh, Spectrum. We'll talk about later on. But there's been quite a lot of seismic activity going on uh, offshore Namibia. Um, offshore South Africa, uh, very at the tail end of last year, the sort of uh, long-awaited Ibuhizi field has changed ownership. This was um, 
subject to another partnership with Taylor in the last year that fell apart, but Sunbird Energy has reached an agreement to take 76% in this particular project. Um, the Orange Basin Block 1 as well, Cairn India have formed into that block, which is just south of the Kudu, Kudu area. Um, and the deep waters of south of Mosul Bay, uh, where are we? Just down in this area here, are under exploration. I think it's Total who has the 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 the, the, the licenses there. And if we go further around, just around the corner, um, we have uh, Exxon Mobil. The, the speakers are coming after me. Impact Oil. They've got acreage of this area as well, so they can tell you far more about it than I can. The other region that has been mentioned before is the onshore Karoo Basin. Now, this is a, a nascent shale gas province. This is not my area of expertise, as we do primarily do offshore, but we, I did a little bit of research just to sort of give you a flavour of the, the sort of quantities and potential the market in this area. Um, we, we estimate what well, the US administration said in South Africa, there's about 485 TCF, whereas in the USA there's about 480 TCF. So you can, this is all quite a back, back of a fact packet calculation. So you can say that the, the, the market in South Africa could be uh, analogous to the US market as a whole. Um, so we did some ca calculations on the, uh, the, the, the prices of, for this particular thing, but that's in the next slide. Um, but Shell has been the main operator uh, of taking up some uh, some some acreages in the Karoo Basin, so they are actively looking at this. The fracking in this area may be, I wouldn't say problematic, but will need to be uh, investigated further, just purely due to water resources. But there has been a, a a survey, I think, sponsored by Shell to map all the groundwater resources in this particular area to, to help with the, the, the ongoing uh, research for this. So other companies uh, involved in the, the, the Karoo Basin is Sunset Energy, Falcon Oil and Gas, obviously Sassel, Statoil and Chesapeake, um, and Anglo Coal as well. So the, the calculations we did, um, so in 2010 alone, the CapEx the US shale gas capex was in the region of $24.8 billion. Um, but th that was just for upstream, and for the infrastructure, it was um, $8.5 billion. So if you equate that to the Karoo Basin, which at the moment has no infrastructure of any type, there's no, made, apart from the uh, South Africa Mozambique gas pipeline. There's no gas, gas infrastructure in this area at all, so it would all have to be built from scratch. So the investments in this area are potentially massive. Um, so yeah, there's a study done by Econometrics which showed that if they develop a 10%, a tenth of South Africa's uh, resources, it could boost the economy by $24 billion a year. So this is something obviously the South African <coughs> government is one wants to promote quite actively. Opportunities in Madagascar. Um, as I mentioned before, the, 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 the governmental regime in this area is still uh, under, uh, yet to be determined, <laughs> should I say. Um, so I don't think there'll be any exploration in this area before, before next year at the very latest. And the same goes for Joan de Nova. Uh, there is active exploration, but this is um, most on the, on, on the seismic field, uh, field. So, I, but again, I don't think there'll be any drilling before 2014. So, opportunities to Mozambique. Um, Anadarko came up with the large wind jammer uh, discoveries, plus others, and ENI came up with their uh, Mamba South. They've been in tail in the last year, they've been in discussions together to develop these together. Um, so as a result of these particular discussions, that they, they, they came up to a heads up agreement. And 
So this has moved forward on a couple of slides. I'll, I'll show you the, 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 the LNG um, concept that they've come up with. For Mozambique, there has been five options on how to... It was a question that was asked earlier on, how do Africa, uh, how does African nations want to use the gas? So obviously the, the uh, Mozambique and Tanzania have, have quite rightly so made it, put into place a, uh, a gas development plan, how to use these gas resources to the best advantage of the indigenous population. So the, the, the plan here shows five different options where LNG is, is, and gas pipelines are are, are passed on to different infrastructure for creating uh, 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 fertilizers, gas to liquids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these, these, all these options may or may not come uh, go ahead, but it shows that these are actively being considered. So this is uh, this is the the uh, a a fungi LNG park conceptual design. As it was mentioned earlier on, it's a ten train. LNG development. So compared to things going on globally, this is a massive development. The feedstock for this, as I mentioned, will come from the Area 1, which is Anadarko, Area 4, which is ENI. Um, now, Anadarko has been already actively marking, uh, marketing the gas in Southeast Asia, primarily in Taiwan, Japan, and South Korea, the, the traditional market for Asian uh, gas. So the feed contract for the uh, for the LNG has already been award been awarded. It was announced by Floor yesterday that so it's going to be a joint venture of Floor and uh, JGC Japanese company and also CB9 Kyoda um, and Bechtel. So these these are the companies that if you look at m most LNG plants around the world, they've had their fingers in that this particular pies for a long, uh, quite a few years. The offshore feed for this development has also been awarded to basically a consortium of all the major major offshore in, in installation contractors. So your Subsea 7, Technip, Saipem, and McDermott and all seas. Because uh, in my project, uh, in my uh, forecast later on, I think it says for Mozambique, there'll be something tw like 27 wells. I think this is probably very conservative. There might be more like 35 offshore wells to be, uh, be, drilled, uh, to be drilled and developed in this particular area. Um, as, uh, as Oswald mentioned earlier on, the, all the press releases have come out said that this, this LNG facility will be on stream and exporting gas by 2018. Personally, I think this is also quite an aggressive timescale. Um, given the nature of these kind of projects, I think it will probably slip back a bit to, to next decade. O also offshore, uh, uh, onshore Mozambique, this is also showing uh, potential pipe gas pipelines to export the gas down through, uh, down through the rest of Southern Africa towards uh, uh, South Africa. In Tanzania, there's also been some large offshore uh, developments. Uh, Statoil and BG have both come, come up with some very large uh, discoveries. And Tanzania may ask these two to work together to, so rather than having two separate LNG projects, have, have one single one. Um, the tail end of last year, Off Your Energy said it's going to resume uh, its Tanzanian drilling campaign. Uh, the first couple of wells in the, uh, the campaign, the, the Judari South, Judari North, um, I think they, they did come up with some uh, large, large discoveries. And where are we? Uh, in October last year, there was a, an award, uh, a contract award by Statoil to perform pre-feed engineering for an LNG facility in Tanzania. So this was awarded to, uh, I think it was... KBR, which is uh, the old Halliburton company. Uh, so, as you can see, th this region is well placed for the export of LNG, and it probably most likely export markets are going to be Southeast Asia. Um, yeah. So, opportunities in Kenya. Kenya is still, compared to Mozambique and Tanzania, is still lagging behind a tad in offshore discoveries. Um, but 
there's going to be BBG and partners are going to be doing new surveys on the uh, L10A and L10B regions. Um, and Kenya may try and do its uh, future bidding rounds so that it's smaller blocks and there may be uh, more, more share for the government in that particular area. So looking at the market overview, um, so as I said earlier on, the, the subsea wells for uh, Mozambique are quite, you know, what you'll see in all of these, these forecasts is basically 2017, 2018, 19, 20, that's a spike. That, this is when all these developments, the LNGs, <coughs> the tiebacks to the onshore facilities are going to be put in and, in the, and coming on stream. So we have 27 wells going to be going in offshore Mozambique. As I said, that's a very conservative estimate. Uh, Namibia may come on board uh, with some uh, in 2018. South Africa will keep, will keep trucking along with the, what the Mosul Bay stuff. And Tanzania also will, will uh, have a spike in wells about 2019. We've got the uh, same same thing for the, the pipeline installations. You're going to have a, a, a by kilometre, you're going to have a spike in 2016, 2018. These will be tying back to these large LNG facilities that, that have been mooted for the East Coast. And the same goes for the control lines. Obviously, you've got a subsea well. You're going to need this very similar control lines. Going back to this, so you know you've got quite a quite a lot of kilometres of control, control lines having to go in in these countries. And this was capex. This gives you an idea of the the amount of money that's going to be spent. So it's going to be uh, Mozambique and Tanzania at the tail end of the, the this decade that are going to have the, the largest capex spend in them. And so if we're looking at you know. 2016 in Mozambique, you're looking at uh, 430 million dollars. You know, and you're looking at billions towards the end of the, the decade. Um, we made a rough estimate to calculate what the platform installations are going to be like in this region. The caveat for this is this is all subject to company conceptual design, feed, etc. So you know, it's not a huge amount of platforms going in because a lot of this, the infrastructure is going to be subsea based. So up to 2020, we calculate there may be th uh, 13 platforms going in, but I think these will probably be it'll be a lot less than that. Um, one issue that was raised when I was doing the research for this initially was pi piracy. Uh, in this region, especially out of Somalia and uh, acro across the, in the Arabian Peninsula, there is quite a lot of piracy. For the security of this region, Mozambique has requested naval and air support from the South African uh, armed forces to help counteract Somali piracy. And South Africa also has sort of placed itself very well as a hub for, for the development of these particular uh, fields. I mean, if you look at the nearest, the nearest uh, West Africa is still quite a way away. You've got uh, the Middle East and all, all its manufacturing bases, whereas Southeast Asia, they're all, they're all quite far away, whereas South Africa is the only country in, near that but that has the, the industrial infrastructure and the, the deep docks, <coughs> the deep harbours that can, that can supply uh, these developments with raw materials and also engineering. And as I mentioned at the end, we at Infield have been working on a southeast, a southern Africa uh, map. I have a limited amount of them, so come and grab me afterwards, we can give you one for free. So that's no problem. Um, and that's the disclaimer read it at your peril. <laughs> Yeah, please, over there. Henry Lang, Gold Associates. Uh, just a very simple one in terms of rig availability. Do we see um, 
the general issues of rig availability really impacting on East African development rates? Uh, that's not something I actually researched while doing this. Um, I, I would say I think there is one or two rigs under long-term charter for from the the, the, the Anadarko BG etc. That, that could be drawn into this area, but that's a please don't quote me on that. Yeah, I mean just to, I, I mean there's obviously huge pressure on the deep water rig market at the moment, and I mean if you look at our experience in Tillo, I mean, wells that we were drilling for less than $100 million five years ago are costing us $200 million now, you know, so there's huge pressure and that's driven by the fact that no matter how many uh, deep water rigs they knock out in Mississippi or Korea or wherever they build them, it's never quite enough for the demand at the moment. Yeah. So, I mean, Oz made the point that the capital costs that you showed, and I think you were showing the company's current estimates, mm. you can reckon those, if the market stays like it is, those are going to grow by 50%. So, yeah. And the, the global uh, rig market has recovered quite a bit post Macondo as well. So, you know, there was a, a, a quite a few, I wouldn't say extra rigs, but, uh, you know, they're all, all going to be soaked back up again to the US market. So I think it'll be mostly rigs and long-term contracts for the operators all in this area. Yeah, so if you want to invest your money anywhere, investing in a deep water drilling company is not a bad idea. Uh, right, okay, thank you, Paul.